So up until this point, we have been talking about transit traffic or traffic that is passing through the device. Exception traffic is traffic that is destined for the device itself. So we need to know a little bit about how Junos handles exception traffic. Examples of exception traffic would be things like Telnet or SSH sessions, trace routes, pings or replies to traffic originating from the device, routing protocol updates, and packets with the IP options field. Think of exception traffic as traffic that is not passing through the device, but traffic that is going to the device itself. So when the routing engine receives exception traffic, it sends it down to the PFE via the internal link we talked about earlier. It's worth noting that Junos rate limits this kind of traffic over the internal link to protect itself from denial of service attacks. If you think about it, if there was no rate limiting on this sort of traffic over the internal link, then a denial of service attack could flood the device with exception traffic and crash the routing engine. This is just a built-in feature and it's not actually something that you can configure. We talked previously about how modular the Junos OS is and the separation of the control and forwarding planes. We know that the processes that control routing and switching are clearly separated from the processes that control the forwarding of packets and frames. The separation of these processes are what make it easy for Juniper to use the Junos OS code base to support many different service platforms and still retain a common code base. If you look at our graphic here, you can see how Junos processes traffic from the perspective of the control and forwarding planes. The routing engine is the main piece of the control plane. The routing engine is the brain of the platform as we mentioned in the last section. It is responsible for executing routing protocol updates and managing the system. The RE runs various protocol and management software processes that reside in the protected memory space. The RE is based on an x86 or PowerPC architecture depending on the hardware platform. The RE maintains the routing tables, bridging tables, and primary forwarding tables. The routing engine connects to the PFE through the internal link. Even though all the Junos devices share a common code base, the actual hardware components that compose the control and forwarding planes will vary quite a bit between device platforms. The PFE will usually run on its own hardware within the device, and it's responsible for forwarding transit traffic through the device. Not all Junos devices have separate hardware for the PFE, like some of the smaller, less powerful devices, but most all of the larger devices do. Because the RE provides the intelligence of the platform, the PFE can simply carry out its instructions to forward frames and packets with predictable performance and stability. In other words, the PFE doesn't have to think about what it's doing. The RE has already done that, so the PFE can simply perform the action. Because of this design, Junos devices can perform high availability functions like graceful routing engine switchover, unified in-service software upgrades, and non-stop active routing. The RE handles all protocol processes in addition to all of the other software processes that control a device's system management, user access, interfaces, and chassis components. As we've mentioned before, all of these processes run on top of the FreeBSD kernel. The Juno software directs all the protocol traffic from an interface to the RE for processing. The RE also receives hardware and environmental status messages from the PFE and acts on them. The PFE is the core component of the forwarding plane. The PFE will methodically forward traffic based upon its own copy of the forwarding table. The copy of the forwarding table that the PFE uses is synchronized with the information in the routing engine's forwarding table. Having its own copy of the forwarding table allows the PFE to forward traffic more reliably and quickly and eliminates the need to consult the RE, or the routing engine, for every packet that needs to be forwarded. Using a local copy of the forwarding table allows the PFE to continue 
normal forwarding even when the routing engine is experiencing heavy load or even instability. So now you should have a pretty good understanding of how the Junos OS processes and forwards traffic. Keeping the control and forwarding planes separate from each other allows for fast, protected traffic forwarding and overall OS stability, and that's what the Junos OS is all about.